No, it's, it's okay. I was prepared for it. I had good music. So. Good. <laughs> All right. So how do I do this? Okay. All right. I'm going to play some music, and we're yep. going to get started. Let's I think I'll snap into it. Here we go. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Morning Fuel. I am your host, John Bundy, and you are here because you believe in the power of the spoken word and its ability to change lives, and that by sharing our stories, we can help others to overcome challenges that they cannot overcome on their own. Whether it's a victory you need to win in business or in your own personal life, you understand that answers can be found in listening to others who are willing to share their stories, knowing that their story ultimately doesn't belong to them. All right, today's guest is a dynamo of inspiration and a beacon of transformation in the realms of faith and business. Known as the Entrepreneurial Rabbi, she has seamlessly woven her profound life experiences with her passions for leadership, entrepreneurship, and relationship building. Imagine confronting a quarter-life crisis and emerging not just unscathed, but empowered, turning perceived weaknesses into powerful platforms for teaching, speaking, and serving others. Wow. An internationally <laughs> acclaimed speaker. It's hard to hear this, isn't it? A six-time number one best-selling author, a podcaster in the top 0.3% globally. Her journey is one of discovering truth and fulfillment at the vibrant intersection of faith and business, guiding others to live out their fullest potential within their divine calling. Her books, her keynote speeches, and her podcasts not only provide insights, but serve as catalysts for personal and professional transformation. Her ventures extend beyond personal accolades. They include a publishing house, a nonprofit organization, both grounded in the belief that our true identity is the foundation of our success. She brings joy-filled, magnetic energy to every space she enters, offering life and business principles designed to dismantle any strongholds that prevent life of true sustenance over fleeting success. Get ready to be inspired and challenged to break through barriers and embrace a life of significance and purpose. Please help me in extending a more warm Morning Fuel podcast welcome to a true powerhouse in integrating faith with entrepreneurship, Tamara Andrus. Whoa. Whoa. Let me just start by saying this, okay? It's going to be the most unexpected thing that you're going to think that I'm going to say. When I wake up in the morning, I have to take my retainer out like this. Mmm. Yummy. <laughs> That's all you need to know. So after Excellent. all of that, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. just need you to know. I put my pants on <laughs> one leg at a time. I'm just you know? like you. Yeah. Uh, I actually, my team just shared that with me this week. And they're like, Tamara, it's so funny to me when people stand up in line after you get done with the keynote to just like take pictures with you and conversate with you and all the things. And she's like, when I look at you, I just see you putting your retainer in and out. And I'm like, I love that. I'm holding that That's as amazing. my humility card for right. the rest of my life. Right. I think the next time I step up on stage, I might actually just do that as, as oh, my intro. Oh, After they do this to. bio, just like, hold on. TED Talk. Start a TED Talk <laughs> yes. like that. That would be a oh my freaking gosh! Amazing. No, so, that was an amazingly well scripted. I'm totally going to use it moving forward. Wonderful. Um, thank you. You're and welcome. This is my pleasure. It's I'm, fun. I'm excited and humbled to be here. I know uh, because I, I've I followed you a bit, and um, I, I understand that the the people that I really want to talk to on the show um, are humble. Mm. Uh, you know, I I. I I mean, we've all taken hits, you yeah. know, we've all been really, really hard places, yeah. um, you know, but it's it's really cool. And yeah, the retainer thing, I'm going to remember that. Now. <laughs> Isn't that great? That's Every fun. time you see me, you're like, Tamara's on a billboard in New York City and be like, oh, yeah, she wears a retainer. Right. Okay. Like, like, who am I? Like, who, <laughs> who am, am I? I? You know, like I'm yeah. in the, when I'm in the um, uh, when I'm in the Trader Joe's. Yes. And somebody walks up to me <laughs> and they start talking to me like like we've just had a conversation or something like right. that. And I'm like. Do you listen to the podcast? I was like, wow. You're like, thank I, you. I, you know me. That's crazy. Like, thank you. Yeah, I have no idea. What is so your name? Good. Yeah, you yes. know, it's, but it's it's like any of us could be there, but right. because we take that chance and we put ourselves out there, we risk yes. those sort of things yes. and people perceiving us a certain way. So, right. Cool. Wow. So we um we almost did this before. I know. <laughs> My bad. We're, this is the perfect time right now. Yeah, it is. Right now. It is. And 
you know, I love what they've done with the place. Likewise. It was different the last time I came in here. Really cool. Last time we were here together. Yep. I think Gather. literally that was the last time I was here. Yeah. Gather Virginia Beach. Yeah. Uh, you know, Polly and Doug are amazing people. Yeah. Uh, they were gracious enough to come on my podcast. It was awesome watching them banter back and forth about, <laughs> about sure. their life, about their business. Really, really cool. So mo- at Morning Fuel, yeah. um, which Morning Fuel was, was born out of um, a struggle that I had. I lost a couple jobs. I went in this downward spiral of depression and anxiety, imagining my family homeless, mm. and I couldn't snap out of it. Mm. But through prayer, I, I mean, the one thing that I held on to through the whole thing was my faith. Yeah. But in prayer, I was given some tools. Um, spend some time just in silence. You don't have to say anything. Just sit there. Uh, write down a scripture yeah. and re, you know, read and write down it one verse. Mm. And then slowly it began to bring me out of this, mm. of this spiral. What is Tamara Andrus's morning fuel? Mm, that's so good. The same scripture for sure. Um, I have gotten in the practice of before my feet even hit the ground, I'm just in a space of gratitude and expectation right. for my day. Um, I currently have a puppy, and I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> it is <laughs> an, an apology too. is needed. We have it one is too. I get it. so much more work than I ever remember 14 years ago with my yeah. other puppies. Um, so currently, I am literally unzipping her from her little cage, and she's snuggling with me while I'm in that space of gratitude and I'm praying that she doesn't walk to my feet and pee on my feet. Yeah. So retainers, That's we've got tough. urine on the comforters. I mean, this Dogs. is real life people, but the Lord is my morning fuel. I mean, without him, I wouldn't be where I am today right. because that same shared depression and anxiety, I have faced nightmares, like literally grotesque nightmares where I had sure. to go to therapy mm-hmm. and to just unpack and process. Um, so I had to learn to rewrite my nightmares into dreams. Um, but now when I wake up, because I have a really good nighttime routine, my morning fuel yeah, is so much more up. grounded. Right. Um, from there, I do go and get my mushroom coffee, which I love so much. And then I sit in my little quiet corner before the sun rises and spend time. I'm in my second year of reading the Bible fully through. Mm. I'm doing the program called the Bible Recap this year with someone by the name of Tara Lee Cobble. And um, it's brilliant. It's so great and so rich to literally go through in a chronological way of the word and processing that. And then my babies wake up shortly afterwards, unless I get my move on before. Okay, you say babies. So you have two children? I do. I have a nine and a 10-year-old. Wow. I don't know if people say they're babies anymore. They w- would like to dictate themselves babies. as tweens. They're in their tween years. I'm okay. like, we're not going not there. Yet. Not yet. You not can't yet. be a tween I've got yet. two daughters, so yes. 26 and 19. <sighs> so and um, they get cooler. As yeah, they, get older. they do. They're they, so cool. Really cool. I Mushroom love that. coffee sounds so funky, but I um I I, I bought some and yeah. I tried it and I don't know, I prepared it wrong. It just tasted like <laughs> soup. Maybe. I need I need that kind of bitter yeah. you know co- I, you know, I put salt in my coffee. Oh, interesting. So that was part of part of what I needed to do. Yeah. I like so that. part of what I needed to do was I had depleted my electrolytes mm. in, in my brain. And I I, wow. I I could swear that it was like what I'm going through, it feels physical, but I don't understand what's going on. And then some studies I did was um, I depleted myself of of the electrolytes. I, I did like a I did a twenty one day water fast, but it was Amazing. just filtered water. I didn't know what I was doing. Oh, so I, I had no electrolytes, electrolytes salt, at all. Yeah. And it, it like jacked me oh, up. Oh, wow. And it all just converged at the same time with the losing the jobs. Wow. And how long did you, how long after you, when you were still trying to like get back into shape after that 21 days, were you still realizing there were side effects? Well, like was a long time? I didn't know what happened. Oh, I had wow. no idea. It, it wasn't until I started coming out of okay. that I realized Oh, yeah, that, there's that more was to not this. a good way to yeah. do that. I've done a seven day water fast and fasting has been now a new practice where I'm inviting corporately people into a fast the first right. through the third of every month. Oh, wow. Cool. Um, the Lord had me just I thought I was just doing it solo right as the first of the year started. And then I was like, you know what? He's he's really saying invite people into this experience. Yeah. And then while we were in it, he's like, you're going to do this every month for the remainder okay. of the year. So yes, it's sir. been <laughs> wild. You know, uh, people's mental health, they haven't had to have any uh, medication since mm. they started in January. Wow. I've had people whose marriages have been healed. Um, and so the testimonies on the other side of fasting is an unlock. It's a key to the kingdom that I think people don't give enough value to. Um, or when they fast, they're trying to fast for just like one reason. And God wants to teach you so much right, more right. than you that know, one reason you when, pray. You know, fast Jesus for. said, you know, when you fast. Yes. He didn't say if. He so said true. when. So that was a practice that they 
that they did, you know. Yeah. And so, yeah, so that that, and then the, the sitting in silence mm-hmm. and then the, the Bible reading. And sometimes, you know, some of my favorite mornings are the mornings where I, where I wake up and then I just all, immediately remember and I'm like, mm-hmm. Good morning, Father. You know, and then just get out of bed. Yeah. You know, kind of really just great way to start the day. It well, really that's really is. cool. So yeah. learn a little bit about your morning fuel. Yeah. That's great. Uh, origin story is another thing we like to talk about. And I see this is a, on a lot of podcasts, sure. but I think it's because we th- that's how we communicate as human beings yeah. through story. So um, who was Tamara Andrus before all of this? Yeah, before all of this. I love that. Well, Before the retainer. Yeah. I had a retainer really young, so I don't know who I was before my retainers. But okay. I, um, I would say my pre-Jesus experience with entrepreneurship is where a lot of people like to land. Um, I was not raised, per se, in the type of Christian household that my kids are being raised in now. Right. But I wasn't raised in a heathen household either. <laughs> um, we were creasters, right? So we were like Christian time during Christmas and Easter only. Cre- like, I'd never heard of that before. Cre- I've heard the CEO, right? The CEO <laughs> yeah, of Christmas yes. and Easter only, yes. right? The yeah. Christer Christians. And um, I knew the Lord's Prayer. But besides that, I... That's a lot, though. It, um, it's way because more. Because the prayer and the creeds have been like... I mean, I grew up in the Presbyterian Church yeah. growing up, but I never knew Jesus until I was 20-something. Yeah. But all of those Bible studies and creeds They're and prayers are something. in there. It's so true. His word will not return yeah. void. Yeah, it's so true. And so to have that, even as a memorized experience, um, I I really dove in with Jesus and really committed my life to the Lord at 14 okay. through Young Life. And Young Life is an organization I'm that is in all Life. high schools. Yeah, it was really just like, it seemed like the cool kid thing to do. And so um, it wasn't the, the part that led me to lay my life down for the Lord. That was actually alcoholism that my dad was newly processing in our home. And I just felt like completely unseen by him Mm. and was struggling with some things that nobody even knew about. I didn't even really have context for. And so um, it ended up that I very quickly became a leader in the organization, very quickly was leading small groups. At what age? uh, 14, 15, 16, 17. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Speaking on the stages for Young Life as a spokesperson, right? Not shocking, right? Born to do it. Right, really. And um, it was my senior year that some leaders came about with some information of what was happening, not on the stage, not when I was leading. And I was living that juxtaposing life of walking in the light and living in the dark, Mm. which I think even now so many Christians struggle with desperately. And there's not really public platform or conversation to be had that people nurture well. Mm. Um, Generally, you're ostracized. Generally, you're cast down. Generally, you're put um, outside of what you need most in that moment, which is actually community. And I think of so many experiences in the Bible where Jesus came right to those people, right? He wasn't like, say over there, you smell or say over there, you have uh, an ailment. He was right with them in those intimate moments. So when that happened and um, I did feel all of those things, ostracized, kicked out, left alone, um, completely isolated. I didn't even feel like I could tell my parents about what was transpiring. I really ran the other direction through all of my collegiate years um, on into my marriage honestly. And so while my husband and I would pop into church on Wednesday nights because it seemed like that's what we're supposed to do, um, I really surrendered when I had an encounter with the Lord when I was 29. And that was um, a radical experience that I love to share about, so I'm happy to do so. But it's knowing that I was living essentially an entire decade, which is when you're, you know, in your young adult, I'm free years. I was living free, but I was in total bondage. And now, walking in full freedom, it's um, something I have an empathetic lens for, for other people to just see the shackles that are often completely um, invisible to them. They don't even know what's carrying them, what's holding them back from living that life of wholeness. Right, right. Well, we're going to come back to that 29-year-old yeah. experience with God. But um, you're you're big into something that that has been resonating in my heart for mm-hmm. years, and I try and articulated. And sometimes I'm not very good at it. Uh, But identity. Mm -hmm. Uh, God, all throughout the scripture, changed people's names. They were one way. He changed their names and then they become the other. Uh, So when my wife and I were choosing names for our girls before they were born, being that it was so important to me, um, we, we, a good, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, 
I don't know what we were thinking with our first daughter, but w- w- except that, I don't know, I think it was just, um, you know, love and peace. It was kind of, so we, we named her Suzanne, mm-hmm. uh, which, which means graceful Lily. Love that. And she totally is her name. Mm. And Kimberly, we named her after um, uh, my uh, second youngest sister who passed away when, when she was really young. Her name is Kimberly. We named Kimberly um, after her, but I did a kind of a little research on the name. And, yeah. and uh, Kimball ne- means like, like ruler, like ruler king. Mm. Kimberly means little ruler. Oh. And she was that, like six <laughs> years younger than her sister, but would rule over her sister yeah. kind of stuff. And, and now she's like a leader. Wow. And, and all that kind Love of stuff that. too. So it's, it's amazing. So I, identity being this yeah. big, important thing, understanding that God sees our identity better than we do. Yeah. How do you share with others as you're moving, you know, in, in, in all that you do, yeah. you have, you've got employees, you've got businesses you work with and all, you know, entrepreneurs and all that kind of stuff. What, what is, is that, is that like an important thing? Is that a big deal? Yeah, I think it's imperative. I think we have so many different ways that we classify people, right? And right when you meet someone, you're classifying them by maybe the car that they drive, maybe the way that they walk, maybe how they dress. Um, and those are like external things, right? But then there's also, especially in entrepreneurship, what do you do, right? And it's the question of your work. And then they're qualifying you on, oh, okay, so if you do this, then this is how much money you make. So then they're qualifying you on money. And I didn't know any different. And I was never raised any different and to stand into the fullness of what does my name mean? My name came from the prices right a week before I was born. <laughs> like legitimately, my mom was like, it said, Tara, come on down. So I was clearly made for stardom. That's so that's cool. awesome. <laughs> but she had no other like background, right. no like, let me research what this means or how exactly I'm going to spell it this way. It was all she was uh, certain right. for. Um, so I didn't even know the same thing for my I son. wonder if she won. Ah, uh, she did. She won. No it was Tara, way. come on down. <laughs> and so that's why I'm like, well, thanks, mom, for setting me up for success, whatever that looks like. Um, but I I didn't even know that with my own kids, to be honest. Someone, as we already chose our kids' names, was like, hey, have you ever looked that up? And I'm like, no, I like, what never thought mean? to. Yeah. So we looked up my son, and I was a little scared. They were like, whoa, you should probably change that before he what comes is out. his name? <laughs> his name means barrel maker, which is is interesting. And we rel- like uh, correlate that to us being surfers. And so it's the barrel of a wave. And then my daughter's name is literally Waverly, so we call her Wavy. Okay. So very ocean-oriented was our intent. But when you get into it, he is like feisty and wild and very vocal and he he sounds like the life of the party but could also be the hellion yeah he's 10 and we're like oh that is maybe more aggressive me and my husband are not aggressive people we're not confrontational and so it literally sounded like both of our brothers we're like "Mm, we know what our brothers are into this is not going to turn out well well fast forward 10 years and he's exactly who he's meant to be and the name was exactly uh who he is but for the lord is a totally different piece, right? So the world can dictate our identity and even these name things that you can look up or Enneagram, whatever identity piece, even from an employee perspective that you can do. But God has a different turn. He has a different spin. Everything Mm -hmm. in the kingdom is upside down. And so what we see from an exterior perspective is the complete opposite, right? He says that the rich ain't getting into heaven most of the time, right? Right. Not at least from the rich ruler perspective, but the rich in heart, the rich in spirit. Mm -hmm. Yes, you might have finances connected to that, but God is just looking at us from an inside out perspective, not an outside in perspective. So going on an identity journey, I think is critical. I think everyone is going to come face to face with themselves at some point point. And it might be a mirror moment. It might be a tombstone moment. Um, but I hope that people get to do it sooner. And I was grateful that mine was a quarter life instead of a midlife experience. Yeah, fantastic. I, I had a thinking back at it now, I, I never heard of the term, the term quarter life crisis. Yeah. But I was 24 ish. Oh, so good. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So October 1994. Mm. But um, so the 29-year-old the, the experience yeah. you had, would would you so so um, right now we we do what's called the what the fail okay so it's so the WTF the what the fail moment <laughs> I love it. it's the the mountain mm-hmm. that you know or that ordeal that could have taken you out yeah uh, but you went through it 
over it, around it, under it. You made mm-hmm. it through. You got to the other side. You learned a lot of lessons. Is is that the 29-year-old yes, experience? Okay, 1, talk to me about that. Yeah. We want to hear about that. Yeah, so I was an entrepreneur. I had started at that point nine different businesses. Um, at, what, and, oh, yeah, at 29 years yeah, 29. old? Yeah, 29. So it was a little what, nutty. lemonade stand? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <What? laughs> no, some of them were um, uh, direct marketing businesses okay. that I had started but were doing really well with. Um, at this point, the two that were lasting, I had started a um, nutrition and fitness consulting company when I was really fresh out of school. Is that I, that fit in faith? Uh, Is fit that... in faith was not birthed out of that space, okay. but that was kind of the heart posture behind it. Gotcha. But the faith part was missing at this 20s, right, at this time in my life. So I didn't have that. Um, and then I started what was my college business plan that I had cultivated alongside six other students. We, me and my mom is the we, uh, took that and went running with it after we won a business plan competition at our school. Um, we were the runners up. We didn't get the 25K investment, but they were like, you've got somebody has to do this. It's brilliant. Well, that business was still operating at the time I was 29. We had a brick and mortar store. It's still alive today. We sold it. And so it's really cool to see your college project. You're in business with your mom. Yeah, with my mom. That's yeah. Cool. It's still to this day, like she's one of my favorite co-creators. I love her so much. She's so talented, such a designer. Um, and then simultaneous to that, I had a um, nursing bra company that I had redesigned the Australian number one nursing bra, brought it to the United Kingdom, um, Canadian and American markets. And so that both of those businesses together with a one and two year old at home, um, one who was she was barely one. She was waddling and newly right. off nursing. I was working about 70 hour work weeks and my husband was also an entrepreneur. Mm. So as you could imagine, when you talk about the hustle and the grind and the busy, I was all of those things and also walking in lack of integrity because I had signed that sweet mom of mine off of one of the contracts for the nursing brawl. Um, I, and she knew this was happening, obviously, but I just hurt. I just hurt people. I was like mm-hmm. going to that mountaintop while stepping on people to get there. And a part of that it, lack of integrity was also not being faithful to my husband. Mm-hmm. And that was um, out of a lot of trauma of identity work that had to be done afterwards. And so I had a, what I call a tombstone moment. Mm-hmm. Like God gave me a vision one day after work. And the vision literally was my tombstone and it said entrepreneur on it. And I thought, whoa, like that's terrible. I don't Wait, hold on. You say God showed, showed you this. Me in a vision. Was this, did you have visions often? Um, No. No, okay. not at this point. He that's didn't a, talk to me. That's a like that's an Ebenezer Scrooge kind of like Yes, moment. yes, it really is. I know exactly where I was standing and I just remember seeing it and be like, Okay, what does that mean? Was it an awake? I was awake. Oh my god. I was gosh, not sleeping. Yeah. Yes. I know I literally can see it when I close my eyes. It was wow. wild. And I wasn't asking for it, right? Mm. It was like one of those, you're gonna stop right where you are and you're gonna see something really quick. And then in my spirit, I was like, Well, gosh, like I don't want my tombstone to say that. And I'm like getting dinner ready. And I had had a moment right before that where I had a choice to either go and give my husband a kiss and have my baby come up to me, but she turned and she walked towards my husband. Mm. And it was just this like void that hit my pit. Sure. My stomach. So I was coming into that vision with mm. this void. Mm. And I'm making dinner and I'm like frustrated that it says entrepreneur because I prayed to have the life that I was currently living. I prayed to be a good wife. I prayed to be a good mom. Child of God was not something, but I did know the Lord's Prayer. So there was something in that, right, that I wanted and had none of it at that point. All God was showing me was, you're not going to die an entrepreneur. Is that what you're going to live your life on, hang your hat on? And I didn't want that. So that night I went to sleep and my husband woke me up and I had essentially been discovered in the lack of integrity. Mm. And that next morning we invited in the person who married us and we just were like, here's our story. Here's our broken mess. This is where we're at. We don't know what to do. And I knew in my heart that it was not the end of my story. Mm. Jesus, at that point, three-hour conversation, Jesus pulled me from being on the floor in fetal position to fully standing face-to-face. He lifted my chin and he said three words that are cemented in my spirit forevermore. He said, I see you, I know you, and the key word was, and I still love you. And that's still, you know, be still and know, but it's the still that like, no matter what, I'm pursuing you and I see you in this moment and that doesn't have to be your tombstone. And from that point on, I literally went on a journey of identity discovery, went and pursued Jesus for the first time in my life because this was the first time I'm like, oh, he's real. This is real. 
Yeah. And what does that mean? Right, he's real and he loves me. Oh my gosh. And I'm undone in this moment. I feel the grossest I could ever feel, way worse than the retainer, right? And he's like- and that's pretty gross. It's gross. <laughs> I still love you. And I see you in all of this mess. And um, it was a wild journey, so much so that I went into, got my ordinations license. I went to a year-long worship school. I just went hard after Jesus while also getting rid of all of those company, all those titles, all those accolades. And I was a stay-at-home mom. Um, and fast forward a few years after that, the same fetal position that I found myself in, my husband found himself in. Hmm. So we've, we've walked through it. We've, we've been on, um, on both sides of the, of the mirror and we've been on both sides of the coin and our marriage today is so much more intimate and strong and well footed in Christ than it ever was when we were dating for four years and never had a fight and had the perfect right. Barbie and Ken scenario oh, yeah, right. of identity. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's a lot to chew on. Thank you for sharing yeah. that, that story. I know that, um, uh, you know, more than just a few people need to hear that yeah. because I think when we're, and I know I'm going to speak for myself, when we mess up or we feel like we have, we're not mine over and over again was I'm not where I feel like I should be. Yeah. I'm this age. I'm that age. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not, I haven't accomplished anything. And, and to hear the Lord say, like, I, I see you. Mm -hmm. I know you. I still, I love, still you. love you. And, it does something to you. Mm -hmm. You know, some some of what it does to you is is immediately there's almost like this. You wanna, you don't want to believe. You want it. You want to turn, kind of repel right. almost. You want to yeah. run. You want to hide. But um, but we've got such a loving God. He doesn't let us yeah. do that. Yeah. And He'll let us go around the mountain. Yeah. Again, but oh, then right. we come back around. And, yeah. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. Very he cool. he surely there's that song by Corey Asbury, Reckless Love, where he just like. Yeah. He pursues I thought you of it at when all you, costs. Yeah, when you said when I that. Shared that. Yeah. When well, there's you, when the you other shared one. That, that one. That one word, and yes. that was undone, right? Yes, yes. It's just a reckless pursuit. Mm -hmm. And um, the cool part about it is, is that you nothing about the way you want your story to go or construct it is going to be what happens. Yeah. <laughs> and nothing. Like, and, and, and then it's now, better than what you could have oh, thought or dreamed or imagined. It every could be. time. Every right. time. And so living a life of surrender, living a life we say in our home submission is victory and mm. so who of us can submit first is like right. that's the goal it's not about right. being right it's not about winning it's not about being heard mm -hmm. it's about submitting and that's ultimately what love is right, right. is submission L literally the lord sent uh, jesus to the cross to just submit to surrender and to literally allow all the pain that he could carry to the cross happen. And so when I think about purity now and I think about intimacy now, it's so much more about that eye to eye contact with mm. Jesus, that moment where he was like full of light and just saying like, I love you and right. I don't need anything else from you in your, this life other than your attention. Wow. And so I just give him my attention, obviously from the morning fuel to yeah. the way that I fall asleep. My, my kids are prayer warriors and that's literally how we Isn't fall asleep every night. It's, Isn't it great? It's, oh, it's so, so it's a talk about rich. It, yeah. I feel so rich every single evening. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's so cool. Um, so, I mean, this is the first time I'm hearing your story. I think mm. it's great. Uh, what uh, so where from where from there so so 29 you have yeah. this experience you've yeah. you've got now one business but no you don't you've yeah. got you've got another like ton of business yeah 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 you? i've got well i've got my nonprofit and my for profit and okay. the for profit to a lot feels like there's a lot of revenue streams coming sure. to that one for profit business there's a lot business. of parts to a Correct. business 100% it's an yeah. ecosystem right. i always encourage people to look at it as an ecosystem right. and when you add a new layer it's not you being distracted or you thinking that you're trying to do a thousand things at once like do those things god made you if you read the Proverbs 31 woman, she does a thousand things before the sun even wakes up in the morning. Sure, sure. Is she doing it wrong? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I think she's pulling on the different gifts and talents that the Lord has given her. She's stewarding her time really, really effectively. She's not living a busy lifestyle. She's living an intentional lifestyle. So when people are like, oh, you're so busy. I see you here and I see you there. It like is a cuss word. It's another four letter word that goes into the cuss letter of the cuss right. words category. And I'm like, I'm not busy. I'm actually super intentional. Right. I get to do everything that everybody else does, but I get to choose it. And God chose me. So I need to make sure I'm stewarding that time. And the well. fruit, the fruit of that 
that Proverbs 31 woman is her husband and her children call her blessed. Yeah. Right? I mean, pretty much. Yeah. Fantastic. So, so um, before I ask my last question, I yeah. feel like we, we need we need more time. I know. But so but uh, how, how can folks get in touch with you yeah. to uh, to work with you, to find out more about what you do, to to get to your next speaking engagement? You yeah. Know? Or what do you got going on coming up, too? Yeah, I, uh, I hang out on Instagram most if people are on social. Um, I've got a YouTube channel and all that other jazz, too. And you can type in my name and go to my website, TamaraAndress.com. Um, but I, with my founder collective, I am starting an academy, actually, which I'm so excited to share with you about. It doesn't have to be fully here. But... Um, it's for startups, it's for pastors, it's for content creators, and it's for business leaders who have either yet to be ordained in the process of really putting their faith in the workplace and also operating. So if it's a, a newbie coming out of high school and they're like, I'm ready to go get my, my entrepreneurship on, I'm ready to go get my business school um, certification. I went to business school and I didn't learn anything about business right. until I was an entrepreneur. Right. And so to give people that opportunity to put the work in and to actually see what that lifestyle is like sooner than later. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. So we have a conference every year um, that brings all of those avatars to one space to truly just have a faith and business collision experience. The Holy Spirit is there. Um, I'm always looking for ways to hang out with the Holy Spirit and bring other people into that. Yeah, we can right? hang out with the Holy Spirit and your friends. Yes, Bonus, right? it's amazing. Very cool. So when's the, next, when's the next one? When's the next? Uh, that's actually in Norfolk, Virginia. It's happening November 6th, 7th, wow. and 8th. Cool. And so we're really thrilled nice. about yeah bringing people together. And I would say... At as anyone who's listening to this and they're like processing, whether it's from the bio to like, how is she doing all of that? But then this was her pitfall to that. Here she is now talking about this is the way that God evoked me to be standing here in integrity with full character that is qualified by Christ himself is sharing my story. Yeah. And so as you share other people's story on this platform, it is such an encouragement to so many. And I just pray that it multiplies storytellers, that it literally mm -hmm. creates messengers who this is what I love to do is take a message and turn it into a movement. And everyone has a message to share. Yeah, that's right. You know, uh, in the word it says, um, and they shall overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Mm -hmm. So but but a lot of times the enemy wants us to keep our mouths shut. And yes. As long as they get their mouth shut. Then you know they're not going to become powerful. They're so not going to do so. That's that's really cool. Really, really cool. Well, and really it comes cool. out of a place of shame. That's what the enemy is trying to ultimately is keep us all yeah. in a stagnation based mm -hmm. on shame. Yeah. And I'll tell you, just even a couple of days ago, um, I had somebody reach out to me because I've shared my story. I have men and women from around the world who confide in me about sexual addiction, sexual trauma, um, any any error, error porn, right? Problems right. that are around this thing, which is is an effect on. On our identity so much so that we're now dealing with LGBTQ, ZIA, oh, I don't even know them all anymore. Right. That is premised on problems like these that sure. people aren't willing to raise their hand and say, hey, I did this really brave thing once. And it says, I surrendered all of that yeah. to Christ and he made it all new. Mm -hmm. And so I'm expectant that as more people share their stories, whatever their story is, it doesn't have to sound like mine, look like mine, be like mine. I hope that it's not. Um, but I also know that there's something that everyone's walked through. There's a mountain in front of everyone. Yeah, and, and when you feel like you're alone in your challenges, you need to stop at that moment and, and realize you're not. not you all. are not. Um, okay, last question. Yeah. Tamara Andrus, the entrepreneurial rabbi, mm. what do you need most right now? Hmm. What is it you need most right now? As a mom, as a, as a wife, as a business owner, as a child of God, what do you need? I talked about my schedule and the time. I have probably about four books brewing in me right now. Mm. And I really need to take a book writing retreat again. <laughs> I need space um, to bring those stories in to life for other people. Mm. Um, that would be, I have a lot going on and those are great things, but. Cool. You need, you, need a, you need a, a nice tropical spot <laughs> Always. to go and, to, and to, to be for like maybe about two weeks. Yeah. And just and and all those books will be born yeah. in that in that yeah. time. Cool. Though I don't like to leave my babies that long, so that's where that struggle is. But well, what if <laughs> yeah? What if you can what if you can have your cake and eat it too yes. in a way of you can go have your own space, but also get to be with your family on the yeah. downtime type stuff. For so, sure, that's cool. Yeah. Wow, awesome, Tamara. I am so excited that I finally got my <laughs> calendar straight. Uh, you know. Um, 
the what it's it's kind of the casualties of war it's like it's like you're an entrepreneur now my wife owns the business yeah i am the face for radio so i'm the talent uh so i go out and do the, the stuff and and she she you know so we're we're figuring this out for so the first awesome. time together you know we're new we're i am I, I think i've had the heart of an entrepreneur for forever yeah but my wife is very new to it. Yeah. I would come up with a crazy idea. <laughs> We're going to do this thing. And I'm dragging her along and it never worked. And then finally, mm -hmm. just recently, we had this experience. And we'll, we'll talk more about yeah. this. But we had this experience of uh, we both had a dream at the same time. Wow. And I, all I have to say is only God can only do God. that. Only God. That's what I was going Only God can. Because he knows my wife and I. Yeah. Better than my wife and I know my wife yeah. and I. So. I um, just started doing The uh, Power of the Praying Wife, and there's The Power mm. of the Praying Husband. My, my, my wife has that book. I've seen her reading that book. It's good. If you listen to the Audible and you just literally zoom even forward to where they pray every single time, mm. I have never prayed such profound prayers for my wow. spouse. And it has changed even our our, our you could ask my husband, he's like, we're the happiest we've ever been. We're, we are in such a great space. But there are levels to intimacy oh, that sure. we can't access without prayer. And so as you guys are journeying that, I would just in invite you to be a part of that with yeah. her. And it's things I don't ever have to tell him. Yeah, we've like, been, hey, we've been praying, praying to get, your finances. Yeah, I right? just do it. And yeah. God does the work. Mm. It's really powerful. So good. I'm excited so good. for you guys. God is good. He is all the and, time. Oh, man. Cool. Well, awesome. Thank that's, you. That's Thank it. you for this. You guys, I hope it blessed you. I'm excited to continue to listen to other people's stories on your show. Yeah. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. And and my prayer on the way here is that each time we do an episode that it gets better each time. Yeah. So you're on the best one. Ah, it's the, 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 the most recent one. He has to say that. Cool, cool. All right. <laughs> Thanks, awesome. John. Thank you so much.